of all, I, I wanted to uh, acknowledge a couple of other people. Um, first of all, our steering committee, some of whom are here with our Center for Children's Oral Health Research. I want to thank them for the work that they did, as well as our uh, pediatric dental residents who are here. And this morning, we, when we heard some wonderful presentations of, um, from various uh, groups and places around the globe, um, I realized what a, a uh, vibrant, active group of pediatric dental residents we have who would certainly love to be involved in um, many of these initiatives, so keep that in mind. Anyway, so as we start the afternoon, I wanted to transition to some of the work that we're going to talk about in focusing here in San Francisco, locally. What I talked about earlier this morning is that the focus of our Center for Children's Oral Health Research is bridging the gap between uh, clinical care and research. And what I also realize is we need to build many other bridges, a bridge between, a better bridge between public health and clinical dentistry, which I think this is a wonderful venue for that, and as well as clinical care and research. So with that, um, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Tuan Lei, who's going to be starting this afternoon session off. And th this, this uh, introduction that Dr. Lei is doing is a little bit differently. He's going to be showing some clinical cases that highlight the, uh, the disease that we see here, the types of disease that we do see here in San Francisco. And we have really an amazing abilities to take care of this disease, but it's still here and it's not going away. So it's a lesson for us to bring um, sort of to this global view of dental caries and how we're going to treat it. So Dr. Tuan Lei is Associate Clinical Professor and Residency Program Director at UCSF. He is uh, a recipient of the Academic Senate Distinction and Teaching Award, uh, graduated from North Carolina. Uh, with a dental degree. He's a pediatric dentist and completed his PhD in craniofacial sciences. His research interests are in enamel formation uh, and best, uh, pra best practices in clinical dentistry. So, okay. Tuan? Thank you, Pam, for that nice introduction. And thank you, the organizer from both Berkeley and UCSF, for allowing me to um, represent UCSF Pediatric Dental Clinic to be here to present a couple of clinical cases as a representative of the clinical challenges that we see in the clinic. And because this are a problem that occur in children, it would happen globally as well. And I challenge you to think in a global context, community context as well, um, while I'm presenting this. Uh, before I jump into my presentation, I would like to say thank you to my resident. There are four third year resident here present their master research project and two second year resident also here to present their master research project in the post that we come out and support them and their research demonstrate the theme of community and global health as well okay so the first case I would like to present here is about the inherited tooth defect. I select the inherited enamel defect in primary teeth. Why is that? Because this is such a detrimental condition for children. I mean, they're born with this condition. They walk around constantly sensitive to thermal stimulus. They're in constant irritation. So this is three years old. She's healthy. She came in with her parents and five siblings. Two of them have normal teeth. The parent had normal teeth. However, the twin as well, the older brother had an affected teeth, and it looked just like this. It's not dental caries. It's inherited enamel defect. The reason I want to present this case is to illustrate that <clears throat> we together, we have the expertise, the facility here, as well as the trans interdisciplinary approach from our medical team, particularly pediatric anesthesiologists. Together, we provide a safe, effective, and high quality dental care for our children does improve the quality of life for these, these people. Um, although it's a rare con med uh, dental condition, however, when they have it, prior practitioners rarely deal with it. They send to us. 
we have the facility support to get it done. Um, <clears throat> and also, it illustrates the third point is that when you see a patient show up in a dental clinic and you don't know what the cause of it, you're going to raise a question, a testable hypothesis, and you bring that into the lab to find out what the gene mutation, how to go about to study and determine the function of the cause of the disease, whether it's enamel or it's a dentin or root malformation. So this is just one case of the example. Of course, the second case have to be dental caries. And dental caries occur globally, <coughs> locally, everywhere. Okay? Um, that would set a tone for, th for this afternoon presentation. Um, as you can see, that uh, this child came in with generalized inherited enamel defect. <clears throat> this enamel are porous. They're soft. They hypomineralize, okay? And as soon as the tooth erupted, they worn off from the dentin. So the dentin, as a result, would be exposed, and patients tend to be very sensitive to all sort of thermal stimulus, okay? Now, this is the x-ray. As you can appreciate, the, because of the enamel layer is so hypocalcified, you would not see a lucency, um, then the opacity, in the pictures. As a result, if you don't treat this patient, then you would have a severe attrition of posterior teeth as well as anterior teeth. The pulp exposure will occur and the infection will happen and, and then severe bony destruction and extraction will take place just like dental caries. Okay? So what we do is that we provide posterior stainless steel crown so that it prevent <clears throat> posterior attritions and further um, um, potential exposure to the pulp, the pulp to the oral pathogen in the environment as well as open up the anterior video vertical dimensional occlusion. And we're able to put composite aesthetic crown for patient to achieve maximum aesthetic. This way, the patient no longer has sensitivity. They can eat and they can go to school. They can sleep well. So it's affect overall health as well, as well as academic performance. Now, at six years old, the six years molar come in completely hypocalcified. Again, patient complaint sensitivity. But at this time, tooth is uh, partially erupted, so we have to put class of just to protect the, the sensitivity of these teeth and wait until the six years molar come in more fully that we're able to <clears throat> put the stainless steel crown on for the patient. This is the example of how we put class of just to uh, improve uh, sensitivity for the patient while the tooth partially erupted. And finally, we're able to put the complete crown. And these patients, the, the procedure was done completely ge under general anesthesia with the support of our medical colleague. Now, <clears throat> patients come to our clinic with also a medical condition also. So whether they have um, cardiac diseases, childhood cancer, uh, pulmonary bleeding disorder, we have our medical co colleague in the team provide that support so that we can provide better treatment for our patients in the OR. We were able to collect the staff is a family tree showing that the parents are um, normal, had normal teeth. However, the, two, the three siblings out of five have affected teeth, and we were able to establish a pedigree, and that is indicative of autosomal recessive pattern. Then we collect genomic DNA. We do, we do sequencing for mutation analysis. We found that <clears throat> there is a mutation. As a result of that, there is truncation of the protein. As you can see, that um, the pictures did not show completely up here, but um, on top is a wild type, the homozygous wild type, one of the siblings. Um, and then in the bottom is the heterozygous. Again, this is the wild type heterozygous, one of the siblings also, and the proband where they have mutation, the homozygous for mutation. So it, it's clearly a case of dominant, uh, dom um, the recessive, dominant recessive. And then we try to establish a structure just to show you that when a mutation takes place, we because of the friendship, there's an early introduction of stop codon. As a result, there's truncation of the C-terminal domain of the protein. So the mutant protein would be very short and therefore affect protein structure and function. And so in order to study the function, we're able to carry this observation into a mouse model. So what we did was we knocked out WDR72. Um, with the gene that we found mutation take place. And this right now is a, pro uh, a project that Neil Katsura, yeah, um, Kay Katsura 
is a PhD student now working on in Dr. Pam Ambassador lab to investigate the function of this uh, gene. As you can see in a wild type, the two appear to be normal, hard enamel with translucent. However, on the bottom is congenital defect with hypomaturation, hypomelized type of defect. And this pa the paper will be submitted in Matrix Biology soon. And see, Kate did a wonderful job to characterize the disease <clears throat> process. Now I want to switch here and talk about early childhood carriers. We have a patient came to us, three years old again, recently migrated from Mongolia. This is what you see. Generalized patterns, severe generalized pattern of dental carriers occur posterior teeth, anterior teeth. How, how are you going to approach this? Okay. Now x-rays show severe anterior caries. Okay of the upper four. However, no caries on the lower. If you see patients with low anterior caries, that's really severe, okay? It's extremely severe. So when you see, because of the natural cleanse in the tongue, that how to prevent low anterior caries from happening. But if occur in anterior, most likely it's also occurring in the posterior teeth as well. Um, so sure enough, the posterior, you have interproximal caries, occlusal decay. So what we were able to do was that we established a diagnosis with this severe early childhood caries, patient extremely high risk for dental caries, and we able to provide comprehensive treatment. Primarily, we established um, composite restoration for anterior teeth, some pulp therapy for the back teeth, as well as stainless steel crown, and other small composite restoration. Then we apply fluoride for the patient, then we schedule patient post-op for eight to 10 days, just to make sure things heal well. And finally, we will buy oral health education, oral hygiene instruction. I know a while ago, Dr. Uh, Benzinen saying that oral health education is not as effective. Perhaps his study aimed at school age children, but caries occur in kids at one years old, two years old, three years old, very early on. These kids are at home with mom and dad. We have to be able to trans transmit the knowledge that we know, and we know a lot about what the factor that gives rise to dental caries. We don't know all of them, but we know a lot. <clears throat> primarily improve oral hygiene, dietary habits, so that they could achieve healthy lifestyle, and also reduce the frequency and the duration of fermentable carbohydrate, okay? Not only sugar, but fermentable carbohydrate because it occurs in bread, rice, and pasta. We have to be able to get rid of that and remove the plaque, that's a quick lactic acid and cardiomelization of these teeth. Now, these kids are at home. They don't even have manual dexterity to pro properly to clean their teeth just yet. So the parents have to be involved, okay? So I, I personally think that um, early intervention, of course, with school-based program is great. Anything help, um, we have to have more type route to the disease, okay? And then we establish a recall every three, three months for extremely high-risk category children until we establish a baseline and then we let them go a little longer, six months or even a year. Now, um, <clears throat> this was a result that we established for our patient. We did posterior composite stainless steel crown and anterior com uh, composite restoration to achieve maximum aesthetic. So this is life-changing experience for patients. I mean, I could have shown you cases where caries is so severe and the only treatment was to extract teeth. The most common question parents ask, are they baby teeth? Yes, they are. But why do you have to take care of them? The reason is because when a child in pain, they can't sleep, they can't eat. It affects the academic performance, overall lifestyle. Um, the mom has to stay up late at night, definitely impact on econ economic productivity for the family. If not treated, it causes early loss of teeth. Then consequent, consequently severe posterior crowding and require orthodontic expensive and long treatment of orthodontic intervention. In addition, if you leave it and not treat it, the severity of the infection will destroy the bone and also cause permanent damage to permanent developing, permanent tooth bud underneath. And if severe enough, the systematic involved, as previous mentioned, that fatality has been reported as well if the infection spread systematically. So with that, I conclude that in our clinic, we see many, many cases, you know, but two of the represent, rep, representations here is inherited tooth malformation, could be enamel, could be dentin, and we use our approach, and I know the NIH really 
try to support the translational research. You go in the clinic, you see a disease phenotype, you don't know what it is, you raise a question, hypothesis, you carry the information into the lab, do a vi in vitro testing at first. And then if the evidence support the disease, then you move forward into vivo model. And then the second case was early childhood caries, was occur ubiquitously everywhere in the community, local, whether it's abroad. And it's happened to healthy child, to special need ki kids, such as ADHD, autistic patient Down syndrome, or very severe medical compromise, be that their own patient. These are like cyanotic, blue, two, uh, blue baby, walk around with no adequate oxygen because of cardiac condition, or severe airway, uncontrolled seizure, neuro neurological issues, as well as bleeding disorder, or childhood cancer like leukemia. I mean, they have teeth. And they have tons of medication, and every single medication contains sugar. And when they give it is when the child ready to go to sleep. Parents not going to brush. That's a that's a challenge we have to think. Thank you. Yeah.